Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I would like to thank the uh, organizing committee and thank you for the opportunity to share with you this morning my experience in stem cell transplantation. Um, I was fortunate to be part of uh, one of the pioneering groups at the University of Glasgow in Scotland where we uh, began using an individual's own bone marrow stem cell transplants to treat patients with uh, leukemia. And that has now become a standard of care and also has been extended to treat uh, other types of uh, hematologic cancers um, with, long, uh, with good outcomes and um, very high cure rates. And so today I'm going to share with you some of that experience. And what I'd also like to talk to you about is my own uh, uh, feeling in terms of what I, as I've been developing, st I've, as I've developed stem cell transplant programs at many university centers and then now, I felt that as I was developing a new program, I, we needed to take into account a type of program which would be able to uh, be prepared for the future developments of stem cells. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about the program that I've developed, which I call a unique method, but it's actually a process. And so I'll, I'll share with you uh, our experience. Uh, this is uh, my disclosures. And uh, again, what I wanted to, 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 to cover with you is that there are, sir, there are accepted uh, indications for stem cell transplantation currently, and these include the treatment of using bone marrow or stem cells from bone marrow, cord blood or peripheral blood, to treat patients for acute leukemia, lymphomas, and multiple myelomas. In addition, if someone has a, a, a bone marrow failure syndrome, like aplastic anemia, stem cells can be used to, to treat those patients. Patients who have immune deficiencies, uh, both acquired or inherited, multiple sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, these, these patients can benefit from stem cell transplantation. And also inherited disorders of the bone marrow, such as thalassemia or sickle cell anemia. The potential areas of development are cardiac diseases, uh, such as MIs, cardiac failure or cardiomyopathy, neurolog neurological disorders, Parkinson's, strokes, and Alzheimer's, and then metabolic disorders such as diabetes. Their previous speaker gave an excellent presentation about the risk factors and metabolic disorders such as diabetes, they all tend to have very similar risk factors. And if I have time, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of that. The de degenerative disorders, Dr. Delgado spoke about that earlier on this morning, the use of stem cells for uh, treating arthritis, and then, of course, autoimmune disorders. In addition, when we consider stem cell therapy, we also have to consider what we're going to do for the future. Because, as the previous speaker pointed out, there are many risk factors, and so you, we want to consider what is the role of cellular therapy in terms of prevention. So the question is, as everyone is interested in stem cells and we're looking to see what way can we be involved in it, the question is, what will be the best way to utilize stem cell therapy? Is it to use stem cells from take, uh, to, to develop a, a process for obtaining stem cells where it's put into a vial and so you pull it off the shelf like you would do for a drug? Or secondly, can we use drugs that we normally use called mobilizing or stem cell mobilizing agents to utilize that? And I'll share with you later some of our own experiences. Or should we use an allogeneic source of stem cells, that is a, a donor, or as is being proposed and is still in development, the use of embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells? Or what about using our own stem cells? for personalized therapy and the sources of these cells, the traditional sources are to use peripheral blood stem cells or cord blood or bone marrow. I use peripheral blood stem cells for our transplants and I advocate it. But other people are looking at mesenchymal stem cells, adipose tissue, menstrual blood, which is a very good source of pluripotent and also uh, committed or differentiated stem cells, placenta or amniotic fluid or other sites of obtaining stem cells. The question is, the fact is that what we are very clear is that the stem cells are a heterogeneous group of cells and they all seem to help each other. So if you try and identify one single source, you're probably doing a disservice. So our delivery model is really not a cell. 
It's obtaining the source of getting the best types of cells and then uh, coming up with a delivery model where we can treat patients who have with established indications and then develop the new indications and also incorporate a preventative program. Our program is a self-contained outpatient freestanding model. It's unique and it's the only one in the state of Florida um, and as far as I'm aware, one of the very few in the United States. It's, we've been doing outpatient bone marrow stem cell transplants since 1995. Why, why do outpatient stem cell transplants? Because the major indication are for patients with hematologic malignancies. So, number one is we want to reduce the incidence of infections in these patients who are severely at risk of infections if they go into the hospital. Similarly, also, the approach is a proactive approach. Again, for patients who are severely immunosuppressed, we want to do everything. And if these patients get, who are getting high dosages of chemotherapy, we want to prevent infections and also reduce the complications. In a, a self-contained unit like this, you have the same in the healthcare professionals through all phases of treatment. If we can reduce or decrease or eliminate the complications, then the need for multiple physicians attending the same patient is decreased. And as we know, the more, uh, in my previous experience of, of inpatient transplants, often we would have 10 attending physicians on one patient, and nobody seems to communicate as well. So you have a patient who has multiple, um, uh, multiple people looking after the same patient and often uh, duplicating efforts. And that is uh, one way uh, that we, um, the costs can go up. So if we Reduce the co if we reduce the complications, reduce the incidence of infections, have fewer physicians looking after the same patient because they don't need to, we can bring the cost down. Psychologically, the patients do a lot better because they're going home each day. And also, because of that, their satisfaction is high. So our program consists of a clinical facility, a stem cell collection facility, and a stem cell cryopreservation and storage facility. I'm going to discuss briefly some of the design requirements, the staffing, uh, validation, assessment, and external review.